sounds almost delicious, <laughs> but it's a little bit different than food. I'm Julie Broad of Revenue.com coming at you with a really quick real estate investing video tip for you. Today I just want to answer a really quick question. What is a sandwich lease? Sandwich leases are a popular way that's been taught in Canada as a way to do no money down, no bank required deals. And what essentially a sandwich lease is, is, well, as you can imagine, it's like a sandwich. Let's pretend that this is the house, okay? So this is our sandwich meat. <laughs> and what you're gonna do is you find somebody who will lease the home to you with the option to purchase it in the future, okay? Then what you do is you find someone that wants to lease that home from you with the option to purchase it in the future. Therefore, making, yeah, sandwich lease, cool? Cool. <laughs> so sandwich lease. So you are lease or rent to owning the home essentially from a seller. And then you in turn turn around and rent to own the home to somebody else. So you're not on title. You don't have to go get financing. And now you control this asset by way of the purchase, the option to purchase and the lease agreement. Now, oh, of course, so you control the asset and the ideal is that you're obviously leased to owning the home for say 1400 and then leased to owning it to somebody else for 17 or 1800 pocketing that $400 difference plus your option to purchase is hopefully lower than the price you're selling it for so that you can make more money that way right so you see how you're going to make money in a few different ways in theory this is a great way to do deals without banks and have that monthly income coming in and hopefully a little bit of profit at the sale. The reality is a little bit different. Number one is the effort involved in finding these deals and finding a seller that's willing to do this is huge. We embarked on a massive yellow letter campaign, not really with the intention of doing these types of deals, but with this in our toolkit. And we encountered a few people that were potentially willing to do it, but then when we weighed the risks, we weren't willing, and I'll come back to that in a second. So the marketing effort is one big challenge with this strategy. So it's not just finding the deals though, you then have to find that person on the other side that is okay doing this strategy as a lease to own from you. Then that's part one. So marketing to find both parties that you're going to need to work with. That's your first challenge. The second challenge is one that we kept encountering, which was the reason that the seller was motivated enough to do a strategy like this was almost always because the house was run down. They weren't able to sell it currently without losing money, so they needed a better price in the future. And inevitably, because they were short on cash, they hadn't done any work to the property, so it needed a lot of work. Now, are you going to do the work so that you can attract somebody who will pay a good price for this property and not be a pain in the butt in the meantime? Let me think about this. You would be investing your money into a property you don't own. Yes, you control and you should in theory make money on this, but it's definitely a risk, right? They might not close on it. If you can't get financing, then you won't close on it. And now you've fixed up somebody else's house. How nice of you. So you really have to ask yourself, how much money do you want to put into a house that you don't own? The third issue is aligning the timeframes. So the seller might wanna sell in a year, but your rent to own tenant who's on the other side of your sandwich, they might not be able to buy it from you for two and a half years or three years. So how do you get those timeframes to line up? Because again, you are doing this whole thing because you can't qualify for financing and you don't have the money for a down payment. So what's your plan B if you're not ready to close when your option agreement is up? Three pretty big challenges with sandwich leases for a very small potential return, right? You're looking at maybe four or $500 best case scenario. And then how much more are you able to negotiate to sell it for than what you're paying if you're not doing any renos? 
pretty challenging strategy to execute and a whole lot of work. So our strategy has always been to raise the money so that we can buy the properties we want to buy. Of course, we've always been open to finding deals where we have a motivated seller who might do a vendor take back seller financing or some other kind of creative deals. But the sandwich leases, we've just never found the return was good enough for the risks we had to take. These no money down, no bank required strategies can work. But for us, they weren't working to create the life and the business that we wanted. Just because sandwich leases are a challenging option doesn't mean you still can't do deals without your own money or without the banks. We've done lots of deals using joint ventures, private lenders, seller financing, as well as RSP mortgages. So there's still lots of options for you out there. And if you want to know about any of those, head on over to our YouTube page, check it out. We have lots more videos to help you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It makes me smile. It makes me happy, encourages me to film a few more videos for you. And if you haven't already, head on over to revenue.com, subscribe to our newsletter and check out the hundreds and hundreds of articles that we have there to help you become a great real estate investor. See you next time. Sandwich? No bread.